explains. They say they feel a lot more confident about their macro. We we actually caught up with uh, with them, and they said after the loss to Waterloo, you know, they got drug around the map a little bit. This time they feel a lot more confident and that they've shored up a lot of those just macro abilities, uh, and, and they think they can play the whole metagame a lot better. So we'll see whether or not that's something that they can out. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I oh, actually I, actually, I got it. I finally got it. I'm uh, kind of a... I'm terrible at this apparently, but it will get better no matter. So, uh, yeah, as you see, we do. I mean, the meta is kind of odd right now. I know you were talking about um, actual teams, but I want to get into the meta a little bit. Huge stopwatch meta. I mean, some people might even be seeing memes on, uh, of course, the internet, on Twitter or anything like that, or Reddit, where uh, there was a Korean game, I believe it was. It might have been, it might have been an LPL game, but um, there were stopwatches after stopwatches after stopwatches used in one sequence of a fight. And uh, we're on the point uh, 8.3 patch. That hasn't changed. So that sort of thing may be coming out here as stopwatch can be built in for quite a few items. The, uh, the uh, stone plate, the guardian angels, and of course, Zanias as well. And every one of these champions can use that uh, very well. Uh, <laughs> pretty, if you can name somebody who doesn't use either guardian angels, stone plate, or um, Zanias, then I mean... that. They probably aren't. <laughs> they haven't probably haven't been invented yet, or they might just be like possibly a support Nami or something like that. But even then, you can still build a. Uh, you still take stopwatch anyways, just to get out of sticky situations. Because you can still sell the stopwatch, and I think it's 150 gold, so you can actually get it for free and then sell it, and that's actually profitable gold if you're not going to be building that stopwatch into something. I, that, I mean, that's that's a thing that's often overlooked in this current meta is that there's really no disadvantage to taking the stopwatch because you can you don't have to build it into something else. It is good just on its own merits as an individual item. I want to talk over about this uh, pick and ban a little bit. The last ban phase did get a little AD heavy coming out from Quinnipiac there. They did not want to see the Varus or the Draven uh, compound with that Leona. Shinzu on that Misfortune Champion, we know he's a little comfortable playing, so can definitely run that one down. The Xerath takeaway too from Quinnipiac for Lives in Box is pretty big because we actually know that that's something that the Ochre plays there. So actually we'll opt for the Zoe instead. We'll see the burst fights coming down. Last pick now for Quinnipiac. Yeah, and the Xerath is actually still very popular. Of course, Zoe is as well. Um, Zoe, your main objective there is just to one-shot somebody. You have Tristana to one-shot. You have the Xerath to one-shot. And the object for um, anyone on the side of Quinnipiac is to stop those one-shots because if sleep, uh, uh, Sleepy Trouble Bubble from Zoe can land on, say, a Xerath or, um, or a Tristana, that sets you up for a, a, a very long-range Q that can be very devastating. But we do see uh, lives, in box, uh, lives in Box taking... Uh, possibly taking a cleanse, which would get have you know so that get out of jail free card may also be running the uh, um, uh, the spell book as well to possibly switch that out later on whenever they need it because you do see that uh, especially in top lane or seeing rich and famous on the shin take the ignite more than likely going to be, be taking uh, the spell book keystone and switching that out for a teleport because it is so versatile you can do that uh, you can. I use it so many different ways. I mean, we even saw yesterday in the LC EU LCS uh, between Fnatic and Misfits. Um, Misfits jungler took, uh, well, took the spell book on, on their Sejuani and actually started with Smite, but then took Teleport later on, which was extremely interesting as far as the mechanic goes. Yeah, I, I mean, it really does add a lot of dynamics. Now we will see actually Rich and Famous opt for that Teleport at the last second. I yeah, actually liked the Ignite start. Um, simply because as Shen, you don't have a whole... Shen versus Maokai is not the most favored matchup for either of these champions. It almost always divulges into a farm lane, unless one player is just so much more mechanically talented than the other. Uh, Shen has a lot of bullying potential, Maokai too for that matter, but a lot of times this, this can very much end up being a passive lane. So I thought the Ignite would have been fun just to see it. Like, no, this is not going to be passive. I'm going to be playing it out, and we're going to see what happens. But, yeah, it's always uh, nice seeing, like, a Riven and Vladimir in top lane where you can actually see fights. But, I know it. But yeah, and instead, when you, see, when you see two behemoths like that in the top lane, it's uh, it's more of who can use their teleport, especially Shin, who can use uh, their ultimate a little bit better because Shin can, use, you know, of course, stand United down to the bot lane and protect one of his allies and teleport back to the top lane. So it's actually, it's more of a global presence on the top side. They say it's an island in the top side, but that island comes with a very, uh, very well-equipped airplane to get off that island and into a position they need to. So that's essentially what this top lane looks like it's going to be shaping up to be. It's a private jet, Shen, right? Yeah, yeah very much so. He does have a private uh, jet, jet considering his ultimates. 
I like well, I like the global uh, global presence that Quinnipiac has really set themselves up for here because Shen obviously just brings that with his kit. Zerath and Bard, not full map range ultimates, not even you know, half map range, but really long range abilities um, as well to just start the fights or potentially end them. A little bit of range on Tristana. I feel like this is going to be kind of a half court team coming out from Quinnipiac. They're going to be shooting a lot of three pointers from this one. So, and just capping it with a Jinjao to get in your face, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, they are, and actually, that's a big uh, a big advantage for Qu uh, Quinnipiac. They can poke down, but once they get to a turret, once they poke away anybody from uh, New Hampshire off of a turret, they can take it down so fast. With Tristana and Zinzao being able to uh, just push turrets extremely quickly, uh, they'll be able to. If, if they can make their plane succeed here, poke out with the Xerath, shove everyone back, and then just objective siege, uh, objective siege, I should say, and not worry too much about getting kills. Just get that macro play down. Yeah, absolutely. That's it on the other side. Um, they have a lot of obstacles to traverse here, just in that there's an insane front line coming out from Maokai and Jarvan. Triple backflip and Volcano is going to be providing a lot for their team there. Uh, I don't think the misfortune is necessarily... You know, going to be the, all the eggs in that damage basket. Um, but Zoe can certainly provide enough burst. And then hiding it all behind the Leona breadsticks can just problem. So they will have the range. And then, like you said, when they get up to turrets, they can they can blow it down. The problem is doing it in the face of these uh, some of these beefcake champions. Because they're going to be some rough health bars to deal with just in a Maokai, potentially in the J4, and then definitely in the Leona. Yeah, very much so. It's a nice front line that New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire is bringing. I keep calling New Hampshire because I read it like that phonetically, but it's New Hampshire. Uh, it is a nice, uh, nice front line that they are bringing. It's a little bit. You know, a little bit beefier than Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac, they like you said, they want to poke and then you know protect their front line, especially against Zoe, because uh, it is going to be hard for Zoe to nuke, uh, nuke out a Shin or even a Bard once he gets going. If um, you know, if it gets to that point where uh, they get that tanky, but um, yeah, New Hampshire is their their front line a little bit better. They also have a lot of a very nice engage with the Jarvan with the Maokai as well, not to mention Leona. Now that does expose. Uh, misfortune in the back line. Zoe's not going to be a problem. Zoe can. Zoe is the probably the slipperiest champion in the entire entire game. She can get in, get out. Um, also, of course, you have Sleepy Trouble Bubble, which is insanely good too. So I don't. I, mean, I don't think Zoe is going to have a problem getting out whatsoever. No, it's really going to come down to how Dioker plays this one because we saw him. This is the third champion we've seen from him play on stream in three different games. Um, he ran Zerath, I believe, in the first game against Waterloo, and Azir in the second game. Had a little bit more luck on the Azir, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly here. And so Zoe, uh, you know, very much likes burst champions. I feel like he's the kind of mid laner to really enjoy just smashing people down. Um, I think this champion's going to fit well to his play style. There's going to be a lot of onus on him to play it very well mechanically because lives in box on Zerath. That's a champion that can punish mistakes really can. So I'm interested to keep an eye on this mid lane as the game unfolds. Right now, I'm really interested to see if either team's going to provide any early game aggression or if they're just going to take it very slowly. I think both of them have some great level one compositions that can really give a lot of trouble to the enemy team should they make their way into the jungle, but doesn't look like we're going to get that. Should be just a standoff. Yeah, so far, just yeah, nothing, nothing too special here. It's gonna be pretty. I mean, pretty easy dealing with uh, dealing with the line of scrimmage here. Nothing really. They don't want to risk too much. Just gonna play it safe. And uh, yeah, just gonna call it a. I guess call it a first minute and thirty until they get back to lane. Really, nothing too much, too much to uh, record there. Oh yeah, and we see this happen between teams, especially now here at the. Uh, ooh, gonna run into each other. Jump back. Wasn't hey. expecting the skill there, but that looks like we get a pause coming out. Wonder wow. if that wasn't something to do with that jungle. Just not quite uh, being ready for it. Maybe they clicked something that didn't go off, and uh, now you know it's they don't want to. It's too late. We'll figure out the root of this, but right as we get to the action, right? Right. Yeah, we saw a, a flag impale the uh, uh, Bascula, Bascula Zinzao. That should kill him, but he is a very you know, mighty warrior of Demacia. He's going to be fine. Uh, so one thing we can't see right now is what keystones have actually been taken. So we don't know who's taken spellbook or who's taken um, uh, you know, uh, you know, any I mean, any of them really. So grasp the undying, any of them right now. So we'll just have to look at animations and figure that one out as the game goes on. But it is actually going to go on as it's we're resuming now. 
Yeah. And so all good there. Rich and Famous definitely prepared after that pause to come down and help out. Every member on the top side of the map is converging in this red side jungle. So Quinnipiac might be needing to get out of this one. I don't know if this invade is going to turn into too much. It does with a flash, actually, but Muskilla will have one of his own. That's a pretty aggressive run this close under tower. So Volcanoes may be thinking he could come away with a little bit more than he did there, but... Looks like, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, Muskilla? Obviously, that did that did play uh, play in favor to um, uh, Quinnipiac because that is a, a flash down for in Hampshire's uh, top lane. That was actually very nice from Biskela to actually keep a hold of the flash, so he's going to stay safe in that jungle. Meanwhile, like I said, the top lane that might be a very gankable lane in about a minute once Biskela gets going because he's not going to have a, he's, he's not going to have a leash now. Yeah, the the other the other turnaround is Biskela will take longer to to get there. He loses his own red. Um, just by default, Triple Backflip did invade and take away the red. Now he's at his own blue buff, so I feel like we're going to see a race to the blue side red buff uh, between both of these junglers. And baskilla has got to catch up there and get it quickly if he wants to stay ahead that or get off a Stellar Gank. We saw some good potential here, and we're seeing some good potential here in the bottom lane. Synergistic has hit a, a couple Bard stuns to keep things moving there. Didn't quite connect that one. But if Baskilla wanted to try to pick off a kill, there are two immobile champions here that he may look for pretty soon. Nice little well, bit of yeah, aggression. I would say, yeah. Nonsense, yeah, level two aggression coming out from uh, the Breadsticks and Shinzu, and that's exactly what you want to see from a, especially a powerful lane like uh, like Misfortune in Leona. You can abuse that level two very, very hard because uh, Tristana level two is not that intimidating. A bit, and so 2C, I'm sure we'll get there. Very staling champion, very heavy, but won't, uh, won't early game especially not against you know a leona with ignite breadsticks can definitely play that aggression out as much as he sees fit and so i'm interested to see really how heavily they push that in because the cs has stayed relatively even lane pressures elsewhere on the map aren't getting too intense yet so tend to hang back with this one i do believe that triple backflip actually just did confirm his own uh his own red buff there. Yep, looking at that one, it did just happen. So we know for sure now that the Skilla will be quite down, and this invade is really paying dividends now for triple backflip. We'll see what he can turn it into as far as ganks goes. He is coming near this uh, mid lane here. Gank lives in the box, does get the stun around. Nice bit of damage. Flash is forced out, but this may be a possibly good turnaround. Nice first blood. Drowsy, but it's not going to be enough. Second blood as well as Muskilla finds two. Said, what are you talking about putting me behind? That is all I needed because now he is right back in the lead on that one. But action's not over yet. Bot lane. So a nice 2-0 for the jungler of Quinnipiac is lives in box. Two assists to his name to help there, and all the lane priority he could dream of. So that's huge. Yeah, that was a that was a very nice gank in the mid lane. Very good timing and nice reaction time by a reaction play, I should say, by Lives and Box, able to get the flash and the cleanse out just in time, and able to uh, Baskilla coming in get the uh, a big amount of damage coming out as well. Not to mention Lives in the Box, he he dishes out a lot of damage too. He's a Zerath level four, I think, at the time Zerath. He had already done a, a quite a bit of damage, and then Baskilla coming out doing. Just enough to get the double kill. Very nice play. And 2-0 uh, now over to Quinnipiac. Yeah, it's certainly nothing to disrespect the level 4 Zerath. Uh, level 5 now. Um, such a dream come true when you're offset that hard in your own jungle. Um, really good turnaround play. Really good presence of mind. And what I really like about that actually is he just took advantage of a situation that possibly would not have gone the same way. But Dioker and Triple Backflip both flashed in to try to get Lives in Box. They both use their flashes aggressively, right? And then the second they do, he turns around with just absolute conviction and comes in to gank the lane, and, and they make it a really nice 2-0 play. And that's actually going to mean uh, Lives in Box is the first one to hit six here. Rich and Famous will taunt out of that one. Triple Backflip not going to get the gank he wanted. No, it is going to be... Going to be safe. Rich and Famous holding on to his flash as well. Has the teleport. He has a big wave coming up here, so he is going to get uh, to level 6 with this wave, and that will put some pressure uh, globally on the map, of course. But there's gonna, he's actually going to stay in the top side here. This could be risky. A taunt under tower is never what you want, especially with a nice oh. stopwatch to boot. Rich and Famous played that one pretty well. Did cost him his flash in the end, but 
He dealt a lot of damage and effectively nullified triple backflip. The bad news is the wave is here. Volcanoes and backflip are going to be coming in. They're going to find the knockup. There's the flag and drag. The tower damage is there. It's going to kill him. Backflip, it's going to kill him. Not as fast as he wants to be. He's going to die to that, though. That is a mistake that you cannot afford to make. And now Zoe in the mid lane, actually mid river, will die again. The skill is starting this game 3 0 and 0. And that's huge for him. Yeah, you want to you want the Zinzao snowballing, and, it, and not to mention in the top lane, if you get Dove two v one and get a kill, you are coming out on top. Rich and Famous played that very well, used that stopwatch uh, very well as uh, uh, also, and now has the teleport to get back to lane. Yeah, he's not going to miss out on too much of that wave, and now he's also level six, has stand united, uh, can teleport to the bot side. There hasn't been an extraordinary amount of action bot side, but Basquilla, he's playing very aggressive. Stand united is going to come in handy for him. He doesn't need the aggression in the bot side because at this point, uh, they can just keep pacing things out the way they are. It's a cloud drake, which means usually we're not going to see it take until about 20 minutes. Um, I might be exaggerating a shade there, but teams do not prioritize cloud drake in the early game. I'll leave it at that. So the group up and fight objectives are not going to be present until at least Rift Herald likely. And that means good news for Basquilla because he can just pace around these lanes Prowl for anything that he wants to get a kill off of. Triple backflip himself got a kill, but there is no lane for New Hampshire that has any sort of pushing potential right now. There, there's a slight advantage in the bot lane. Doing well for Volcanoes just yet. And uh, mid lane, certainly not the lane that I don't think the Ochre was hoping for. So, all in all, this is sort of a skill as playground. Yeah, no, he's having a great time right now. He is. Uh, he's still even a farm, but yeah, way up. 3 zero, zero, influencing these lanes. He's also coming down to the bot site oh. now. Remember, Stan United's up. Here we go. Yeah, here he is, getting half health onto Shinzu. Does force the flash. Nice knockback, but Redstick finds it right back in. There's the downtown three-pointer, but both stopwatches oh. are blown. Doesn't matter. Baskilla claims the fourth. Takes that one away, lives in box. Gets the assist, but not hopefully the kill credit he was looking for. One for this champion. Four of the kills are on this Jin Zhao, and Baskilla is not playing games. No, he is not. Well, that means when he gets to this mid game, which, you know, where uh, Zin Zhao excels, he is going to absolutely destroy. And not to mention, so we just saw the, the um, stopwatch used on the bot side. It You have to wonder if it really was needed because. I mean, they were going to die anyways, it seemed like, and only using that stopwatch actually put them in a position to where the cooldowns can come up from Quinnipiac and just destroy them anyway. So it almost looks like they're going to use, but hold, hold on. Nice. Yeah, they're going to find one kill with the Cataclysm. Triple backflip to make that one happen with the help of the Ochre. Junglers are taking all the kills away from their mid lane counterparts. There shall be nothing but starvation and famine for the mid lane. And, uh... Feasting in the jungle tonight, but all the while I do want to keep in mind what happened. They did take away the cloud drake that was claimed by the side of Quinnipiac at the cost of first tower. They've left volcanoes in the top lane alone. Standing United was used, teleport not available. So Rich and Famous abandoned his post at the top lane and left a tower and a good chunk of damage on the other inner. Now the skill is in trouble. Actually, we'll get to that in a second. Triple backflip flashing for it, but certainly sealing his own fate. He will not get out of this one alive. I do not believe. Now triple. Backflip does die, lives in box, takes that one away from him. And the action just keeps rolling out of here, Fekhez. Yeah, jungler for jungler, but the big part is Baskilla did go down. He actually has two wards, could have probably saw that one coming if he placed those, but that is going to be a bounty going over to his allies and a lot, or uh, to his, uh, to uh, New Hampshire, I should say, and a lot of damage on the bot side turret. So a lot of distraction being caused because uh, Baskilla getting caught out in his own jungle also. But uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit too... Uh, I guess too overzealous, not going back when he should have, and there it is. He's I mean, he's finally died, so he is going to be able to. Uh, he's going to go back to those wolves where he died. Can't pick up his body though. He's just going to try to farm mm. a little bit more and uh, needs to place those wards because again, that probably could have saved him if he had placed those. All right, this isn't Dark Souls. You can't just come back and claim all your souls. Try as he might. <laughs> still, still on the four one one. He's got all the information you need, so really in a good position to just deal out so much. Playing around the bot side, though, I think is a little bit of a wasted opportunity because while it's certainly where all the action is, the top side is just left alone for Volcanoes to absolutely not just reclaim his lost lane, but get an advantage. He's now 81 CS to 64. He's claimed the first tower, and that's actually net them a goal lead for New Hampshire. They're barely in the... I mean, it does, it's not an effectively... It's not one that counts, right? Just 200 gold, but it's not what you'd expect either, just being in a position where, hey, we're down three to six... 
with all the early pressure that we had from the Skilla. Yeah, it looks like... Well, by the way, while that happened, the first turret was picked up in the top lane, but we have some action on the bot side. Yeah, it's going to be a nice stun, but the E does not connect, so Maskilla will be thrown off of that one. Does knock Triple Backflip back out of that one. The stopwatch has come out, and he's trying to find Shinzu before he dies. Will not. Triple Backflip gets the dunk, and then it is the Leona ultimate to come through. Triple Backflip wanting to find this, but there is Libs and Box on the side. Zerath, nothing to leave on your own flank, and just forget about because he will punish you. Both top lane teleports are up, so we're going to see if they try to push this one further, or if both teams are just going to back off. <sighs> yeah, it looks like they are going to try to prop... Oh, hold on. Oh, that's Sleepy Trouble. Oh, he has it. cleanse. He has cleanse. He's not going to use oh, it, though. Oh, my, my God. Oh, triple backflips in some trouble there, and they do get onto Dioker. He's trying to make this one happen. Tusi does get the stopwatch himself, so a lot of stopwatches being burned. Zerath Ultimate not going to come through and be just as effective as they hoped for, so right of the Arcane. Not going to be the right move at this time. And we're just back to a little bit of a standoff. Neither of these teams are too sure in what they want to do, but all the while it has mounted to a bit of a one goal, 1k gold lead coming out for New Hampshire. They are winning in this chaotic skirmish style of gameplay that we're seeing. Yeah, and that is uh, that is interesting. That well, it's mostly because of the turret, because Piscilla still, he is, actually has died again, but he is still a very very up in farm. Uh, uh, yeah, up in farm, actually. He's up in farm with that kill, uh, with the uh, kill on the red buff. Just got four more farm. But... Um, yeah, he's still up in kills and assists right now. And uh, I think, what's up? I was gonna say, I think we need to levy a lot of praise on the triple backflip actually, because I don't believe he had any kills by the time that Muskilla came out and had four of his own. And now he's just turning this around, has four kills. He's matched Muskilla in the kill game. And look, he's still applying the pressure. He's just passed him as he does slay Tusi for his fifth kill. So this is huge. New Hampshire are not taking this loss uh, early game lying down at all. They're really pushing it, and Triple Backflip, I think, is kind of the oil that's lubricating this machine. No, very, reset here. no, no, very, mu very much so, and as we see that New Hampshire is finally going to... Oh, hold on, never mind. Well, and Volcanoes goes down, and Rich and Famous is trying to get in, but will not find Triple Backflip just yet. Now, Synergistic wants to help his team get out of this one alive, but Red Sticks on your face is going to be troublesome. Not going to let that one happen, and they finally give a much-needed kill over to Shinzu. So they're still down in the kill game, but with another tower to boot, New Hampshire looks like they are roaring back and putting themselves in a really good position to keep pushing this one out. The other side is the skill was not there for that fight. Their strongest player is definitely taking this top side tower, so it will even out a little bit. Excuse me as I move this into, into the... Uh full screen. I believe that should fix the overlays a little bit there. But uh, yeah, finally, turrets being picked up by Quinnipiac. They were able to pick up, pick up that top lane turret, but bot lane and top lane are down for Quinnipiac, and that is still giving... Hold on one second. Sleepy Trouble Bubble landed. Yeesh. Yeah, oh Vision Box getting out by the skin of his teeth on that one. Really almost died, but the summoner spells kept him alive and well, all things considered. Dioker uh, gonna feel pretty good about that one, especially with Shinzu here. They can really start to hammer away at this tower. The skill is going to keep them from being able to pull away too much, though. So they had a, a good play to force a mid laner out. They didn't realize that, oh, hey, here's the rest of the Quinnipiac team, and we're going to have to set this one up and do a little bit more of a long con siege instead of just blasting down the tower. But I think it's all nice posturing coming up, and that might be the next objective where we see these two teams get ready to scrap a little bit. Yeah, very much so. And scrapping is what I want to see because... Um, I, I really want to see that lives in the box. Lives in the box, he's actually doing very well. Keeping up in farm with uh, Dioker and getting kills all the same time. So he's actually, he's a big power player right now for uh, Quinnipiac, but we have maybe a catch here. They're going to try to find that one. Baskilla does not get it. He is locked up, and so that will mean triple backflip as a priority. And as he goes to sleep, he is rooted. Backflip finds the kill jungle for jungle. He takes that one in spades. Volcanoes now sitting on a 2C, and that is not what you want for your AD. He's going to try to get in, but Dioker finds it, and this is not over yet. It's Rich and Famous is the next one to fall. Red Sticks is chasing him down, and this is not good. Synergistic going to try to do what he can. Does get a little bit of oh. damage back on as he picks up the kill. The support will come back, goes over in favor for Synergistic. Another kill denied to Lives in Box, but the rest of New Hampshire is here, and Triple Backflip is on the Triple Back side, ganks him, and does not let him get out in one piece. Lives in Box now. Summoners kept him alive last time, but not this time. 
as New Hampshire makes sure he gets put in the box six feet under the ground this time. Yeah, New Hampshire finally roaring back here. I mean, I say that they've had a gold lead this entire time, but now they're really taking advantage of it, taking advantage of their positioning and uh, forcing this engage. Uh, we talked about they have a great engage and they finally use it, but I think Shinsu needs to get out of here because he still cannot take out Biskela. I don't believe he can do 1v1 a, a fed Zinzao. No, I mean, he has... Uh, capitalization Baskilla, but he's still certainly a huge threat to the likes of Shinzu. You do not want to just challenge this as the ADC, not in that role, especially one as immobile as MF with no summoners backing you up. So definitely wise to back off there and just stay safe and try to reset. Okay. Yeah, they spot him a little too late. do need to make a quick uh, little shout out a little special uh announcement for the day and that is that uh to say the uh to see uh the ad for quinnipiac yep is uh is actually celebrating his birthday today so uh gonna wish a very happy 21st birthday to this csl competitor and uh and see what he can do uh maybe get himself a nice little birthday present of a win today we'll find out yeah his team needs it obviously again they are uh, both one and one right now and in this, the way the Swiss format works, it is so crucial to have uh, to to not lose at all. Uh, if you have that one win, you can still survive with two losses. But once you get to three and one, it is I, I believe your chances to get to the playoffs are out. But we have an engage. Yeah, we'll talk about those chances after they turn around. So that was a lot of aggression for triple backflip. It's been working for him so far. Did not work this time around, but he did at least get the health bars low. Lives in box. Will have to back likely the same for Basquilla and Rich and Famous. I don't believe they're going to want to stick around for this one. So we'll see if his sacrifice can get him or if it's just going to be a uh, lost cause and, and not the cataclysm he potentially wanted to find that one. It's all going to come down to Shinzu's damage, I believe, at this point. Uh, really can pick out a lot, but we do see the right of the arcane uh, shoving them right back off, so they will not have the priority. And it looks like, yeah, they just find a nice kill on a triple backflip, and, and they'll pocket that one away for a rainy day. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that was some a little bit of pressure. That was a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, a huge dive from triple backflip underneath the turret. Now, considering the opponent, uh, Quinnipiac still had some stopwatches on their side. So uh, you have to be careful of those stopwatches because they can completely turn a dive around, and we saw that uh, right there. And uh, that's why you don't—that's why you don't dive with a uh, with a stopwatch uh, with an enemy with a stopwatch, Corvus. That's uh, that's been that's been a thing. It's been a thing in professional play. It's been kind of it's, a it's, kind of a weird meta. It's a little hard to break habits that are just older than the game. I, itself, yeah, I know, you know, right? Yeah. News as Basquilla getting caught out. Breadsticks takes the credit. Oh boy. He did most of the work with that lockup, but now Volcanoes on the other side going to get chipped down. Both teams are trying to make sure this Rift Herald goes down before that uh, Baron does come up and eradicate him from the game as a whole. So I think they're going to take this away. This should be nice net for New Hampshire there. Barring any steal will not happen, obviously, without the jungler lives in box. Tried his best, but, you know, without the right of the Arcane, there's only so much distance that uh and cover as Zerath, so... And now I'm actually, they, yeah, they're just going to pop it right yeah, now. Yeah, like, now they can get that turret. Take. Yeah, this tower is is all but done. Yeah, that is one of the big benefits of the Rift Herald is that you can. Oh, hold on, synergistic with the with the uh, alt to help him out a lot there, uh, kind of keep him in a good position. But this is a huge engage as Breadsticks wants to go in behind enemy lines. Volcanoes finds the kill onto the skill, but they didn't take down the tower in enough time. Finally. That means triple backflip goes down. This is really bad as well as Breadsticks is taking out New Hampshire. This could be a Pyrrhic victory on their end because that is not the takeaway you want. They got the tower, but two members lost. It's a tough trade to make. I think that they did take away Baskilla and that 2C almost died. Okay with it. The tower and the one kill. They'll trade it for the two kills, but that was that was easily avoidable. And I think just leaving the tower up so long really cost them a lot that fight. That was such a good all from Synergistic, though, temper fading the uh, the the turret, so it wouldn't go down from the initial strike of the Rift Herald. That was such a good play by them. But yeah, the following dive not such a good play from New Hampshire. Uh, they did end up getting the turret, so that does help them with their gold lead and their their actual overall map presence. But a lot of kills just went over to Lives in Box five one and six now. He's going to grab the blue up, and he is the power that needs to be taken down. But he's a, such a safe champion. It's going to be really hard for New Hampshire to get to the back lines, take out Lives in Box. This has been such a jungle-focused game thus far. I mean, we have 
the first five kills, I think, for the side of Quinnipiac, all going over to Basquilla. Uh, yeah. First four or five, but definitely he has five now. We have eight on the side of Triple yeah, Backflip. Yeah, yeah, Triple Backflip has, uh, he's, in, he's he eclipsed him. Yeah. So, last fight, Lives in Box was was really, all of the glory for Quinnipiac was on Basquilla. Now, Lives in Box is in a position where he can really start to turn this game around. And that is what you want. You want to use Jin Zhao and you want to use that lead as an ability to get your real hard carries rolling. Now lives in Bach is in a place where he can do that. We'll see if he can get Tusi there as well, just farming back into this one. Story has not happened on the other side for New Hampshire just yet. They're still trying to find a good way to crack in. There's a kill onto the Ochre. There's a kill onto Shinzu. So they're both in an ability to... to you know, they both can find these kills, but they want a lot more than they have, and they need to stop just giving them all over to triple backflip because he can't do everything for this team. No, I mean, you should be seeing kills on Dioker Zoe. Zoe is... Hold on, we have... Speaking of triple backflip... Yeah, this is going to be likely uh, a little bit of trouble. Um, they're just hammering down. It's going to be a nice ride of the Arcane. Uh, does do a little bit of damage Ooh. to Dioker, but half health is yeah. not as much as you want because you really need to burst that Zoe down. Yeah, very much so, because if not, she's going to burst you down. But uh, so far, it hasn't happened as well as I think they want it to. Only one kill on Dioker Zoe right now, and that's that's not a good sign for whenever you're a champion that can just one-shot somebody. But uh, still going to be shoving the top lane. Still actually doesn't even have a Lich Bane, so not going to be able to shove turrets very fast either, which is very it's interesting. Normally, you do see a, uh, a Lich Bane on a Zoe to be able to follow up because you only have one to uh, one and a half damage source if you want to consider tr uh, sleepy trouble bubble a damage source but hold on tower may be going down in the top lane yeah there's nothing they can do against five members of new hampshire at this point so it's going to be pretty dangerous rich and famous waiting for that taunt a little too long and and had to use it the last minute for the tower but it really wasn't i don't think worth it for him to stick around trying to hold it off but valuable time now resetting and with half his health bar, especially as this Baron is becoming, you know, a priority objective, that's something that he's got to be pretty careful with because I do not believe that uh, too far fetched that New Hampshire would try this while Tosi Tusi is uh, is just blasting out that bottom lane. Yeah, that is something that they uh, Quinnipiac definitely need to be careful of. Uh, New Hampshire, they had five there. They could have possibly gotten a four v five started if they if they had really had the uh, I guess more presence in the jungle of, of Quinnipiac. As you can see, they uh, all the wards had been wiped out, so they didn't quite get the positioning they wanted to, but they are going to play it safe and go back. But yeah, for a second there, that was 2v... Uh, uh, I should say uh, 5v4, uh, 2c. Kind of a... Uh, yeah, trying to trying to come back into this game, not having the greatest game, 0-2-1 right now. Doesn't, uh, doesn't have the second item, the second major item built yet, but trying as he might, still taking a little bit of time for that one. But as we see, there is some pressure being put around the Baron. And this is going to be interesting because teleports are up from both sides. But there's also Stand United up from Rich and Famous. So the bot lane, the top sides of both teams can hang out on the bot side and just wait for this Baron to be pressured to a point, to a point where they need to teleport in. But we see a lot, a lot of buildup in that top side. Interesting, too, because both of these champions definitely can cancel each other's respective teleports. But... Oh. May not even need the time as we do go in. Lives in boxes in trouble. It's triple backflip because they have a skill is trying to keep the damage on the other carries, but it is going to be at the cost of his own mid laner. Lives in box goes down. Triple backflip as well. The stand United is coming in, so Shen will be to the fight before Volcanoes will be able to get in there. And that's Rich and Famous being on the priority, but it's really only defensively. Basquilla tries to go back in, oh, but no. it costs him his own life as he catches a stun in the face. Shen Zhu finding a critical kill. They do want to take that one out and away, and that is two dead for only triple backflip. That's going to be a very big takeaway for New Hampshire and give them a lot of priority to set up. And not to mention, Volcano decided not to teleport, held onto his teleport, and just started shoving that t uh, bot inner turret. So it is almost down. He's actually oh, going to go in oh. onto Tosi here. Been in real trouble there, but uh, did actually get out okay. So um, got a flash out. Very of risky play. Yeah, Volcano's not too worried about the tower at this time. It's not going to protect you that hard. Doesn't want to take probably all the full aggression, but now Shinzu's here, and this is going to be a very easy takeaway as they find their sixths for the side of New Hampshire. Yeah, very they nice. Do not feel like we're only 5k gold apart. Yeah, very, very, yeah, that's, yeah, six turrets to two and only 5k gold apart. That's not very, uh, it doesn't feel that way at all. But these fights are going kind of, uh, I guess you could say they're on a razor's edge because they're going either way. Lives and Box was, being able, was taken out early in that last fight, and that really, really, uh, I guess dampered 
Queen of PX team fight potential. He is their main power source, and Basquilla cannot go back in. He cannot fight without the backup of lives and boxes. Uh, just Q pokes and uh, and his uh, unleash the power ultimate. There's so much riding on Lives of Box staying alive. If he gets taken out, that means Quinnipiac essentially has to disengage or give up another kill, like we saw last fight. I want to take a look at the gold really quickly. Uh, we may not get the chance because it looks like a fight might be breaking out. Uh, we'll see how much damage Volcanoes takes here. But Skill is still on the aggression, and that might not be the wisest of moves as we did see the CC being his mortal enemy. Tose has his Infinity Edge uh, built up now as well, so he actually is a, a pretty big damage source also, but there is a lot, a lot he, a lot of targets he has to focus because there's a big dive potential from New Hampshire. It really is. I'm not as worried about Tosi here as I am about Lives in Box because despite the fact that there's a 5k gold lead over onto the side of New Hampshire for Dioker, he's actually 2k gold down to lives in box. It's about 8k to 10k right now, and that's such a huge chance. But look at that synergistic, just barely getting out. I think Triple Backflip will flash in to take that one away. Yes, he does. And that's a two-man kill onto synergistic. The rest of the team not yet involved, but the assist will go over to Volcanoes as well. So some nice gold net there, but even bigger is the opportunity cost of not having Bard to help you defend this tower. Once this next mid lane wave comes in, this is going to be bad news for Quinnipiac. Yeah, you definitely need Tempered Fate to help with these. Ooh. Hold on. At least the power coming out. Oh, it's, it's interrupted. The fancy feet will keep him alive, but look at that. The turnaround. Red Sticks gets the kill. They take that one away, and now there is no defense for this tower. Basquilla and Richard Famous are trying, but the health bars are falling so fast as that's another kill picked up. Tuse does go down. Basquilla likely going to be the next one to fall here as Dioker picks that one up, takes it away, and this is going to be an inhibitor for sure. That was such great positioning by New Hampshire on the pot, uh, on like around that wall because whenever Bread Six went in to take out Lives in the Box, Shinsu was on the outside. He was actually low health, but nobody was able to get to him. We have another fight coming here. They're trying to salvage this one alive from the side of Quinnipiac. Synergistic finds the first kill necessary to do so, and Richard Famous is at a point where his health bar allows him to do a lot. That's a nice taunt. They find a second kill actually, and now a lot of damage is dead on the side of New Hampshire but the health bars are low from Quinnipiac. I don't think they can hold off any longer, especially because they know that Lives in Box is up. The Skilla and Tose are soon to follow. Should just mean the reset, only the inhibitor. And it's a dangerous, dangerous game for Quinnipiac now. They have a composition that scales really well, but with an inhibitor down, how much longer can you hold out? Oh <gasps> boy. What a takeaway. Oh that's, my goodness. That's what we've been looking oh, for this entire game. That's what we were waiting for. That's what Zoe does. We were expecting that one, but not then and there. That was a really nice play, and I think Lives in Box got caught with his pants very much down in that situation. Yeah, and that's actually really huge because now that is 30 seconds that Quinnipiac cannot fight. 30 seconds that the Baron could be pressured and possibly taken because Triple Backflip, he is two levels ahead of Basquilla now, which we didn't think was going to happen based on how the first you know 10 to 15 minutes of this game went. Basquilla was going crazy, and now it is completely... I guess, I don't want to say backflipped, but <laughs> it is completely 180 in the favor of triple backflip. He is two levels ahead. He has a smite advantage, but they are not going to press it. They're going to just collect what they can, go back. The bear, the dragon is up as well, and they're not even going to take that one. That was an interesting play. I feel like they should have got a little bit more out of that, taken a, a, at least one objective, but lives in box. He is up now and is back to 5v5 as we see New Hampshire starting the dragon. It's got to be frustrating because there are really two very clear paths to victory for this New Hampshire squad. And the first one is catch a nice fight around Baron while you still have fight priority, take the Baron and push the end game. The second one is a, is, a, is a little easier and it's just keep that lane pressure that you've been having up with the inhibitor down. Start pressuring the top side, start pressuring the bottom side and really keep them on their back foots. But you can't just slow play this one out because the scaling composition will get to you. Tuse though, in some trouble. Dioker finds himself another kill. Shinzu quite low. Could mean his own death, but he is running out of the fight. A-OK, -okay. it's a lot of pausing here as they do try to get out of this one. Synergistic over the wall. Shinzu on a killing spree as Basquilla goes down and that's another oh one to my follow. God. Synergistic not gonna make it out of this one alive. Lives in box with the stopwatch. Zonia's this time around, yeah. but not enough. Does get taken out, it's a four. For nothing, and this spells disaster. Look at this. Shinzu is not even in the fight anymore. He's just running up the mid lane. No, they're, they're just gonna try to end here, and they have the time to do it. Yeah, they're not. They have a super minion in the base. They're not even gonna go for the Baron right now. They're just gonna try to go for the kill. There's still 17 seconds on Basquilla, nine seconds on Tusi. They have the first Nexus turret down. They are going for the second one. I think this is gonna be game, Corvus. 
This is absolutely in 31 minutes. The first game going away. Faber, New Hampshire in a very swingy fight. 10k gold or just a lack thereof right on the edge of this game. So they definitely got themselves in the driver's seat. They definitely peeled away what was an even kills game. Finally finishing it nine ahead in that regard. Uh, battle, but they finally did just manage to scrape it out. Uh, I think in a convincing fashion with uh, that last Baron fight. Yeah, very much. Very so. heavy yeah, very much so. That was. I want to take a quick look here at uh, uh, of. I think triple backflip finishing that game with 12 of his team's 24 kills is, yeah. is a very indicative storyline to follow. Yeah. Um, it, I, mean, it, it, I mean, based on how the game started, it looked like Basquilla was going to run rampage, but triple backflip, he actually, he turned it into his own and yeah, 12, seven and eight. I mean, it, you don't want seven deaths, but a lot of those came while Basquilla was destroying everybody. So once the mid game got there, triple backflip knew exactly what to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think too, need to, need to take a quick look at, uh, at Dioker there. Because he was not able to find the kills he needed until the late portion of the game. Expect out of the likes of a Zoe. I mean, you always expect her to be a burst threat. And and with 10 assists, I think a lot of those definitely uh, being to triple backflip. Um, that story is, is underlying throughout. But we really didn't see Zoe becoming the real threat that we thought she might be until a little later into this game. And it, it took Dioker a little bit of time to get rolling there. Same story for Shin Zhu, who didn't have quite the glamorous uh, kill game that we might have expected, uh, but definitely just looking at that gold and that, and that CS advantage kept so much pressure out through the entirety of, of uh, the bot lane split push and, and holding things in the mid lane and really just helping to maintain pressure, which is one of the things I think is very highlighting for, uh, for New Hampshire here is that the way they played their pressure. Um, so team effort despite the kind of all-star sets we see out of triple backflip and uh i think a lot of supportive play coming out of volcanoes and breadsticks too so so they cleaned up their macro a lot from what we saw last week interesting to see how they play it around now into a second game because this is now quinnipiac's time to to evaluate what happened and see okay you know what we had the right amount of we had the potential to really steer this in the right direction and a lot of moments but we just couldn't capitalize on it. So we'll see what they can do in the second game. But before that, uh, we are going to actually be kicking it over to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do need to give the players some time to reset, get some things all ship shape on the production side for this next game, number two, and get ready to roll into it. So we are going to toss it over to a break. We will be back very soon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please don't go anywhere. 